before I start ranging, um, how many of you are at the State Library? Yeah. Yeah, good. Some of you might remember me crapping on about what was going to matter in the future, um, time travel, all that crap. Um, got to the end and decided that we need to be equipping students to create objects of value. And I kind of went away and thought about this some more as you do. And I thought, they don't only need to be able to equip it in the future, we should in fact be putting an object of value at the heart of pretty much whatever we can. You can't do it all the time. I understand there is a need for dress rehearsal. But um, dress rehearsal with no performance beyond it is just messing about. You know, I've seen this in classrooms. Let's pretend to script a radio show. And we'll get Bruce Willis on it, we'll get this and that. We don't actually make a radio show. We just make up words for Bruce Willis. Uh, and some of those aren't suitable to print. So, um, I think that we are in an age where it is possible, but it is challenging. What is valuable to me might not be valuable to you. It's all very well to say this, but how do we actually quantify what we mean by an object of value? So this is what I'm going to try and do for the next five minutes. And it's either going to be straight from the Institute of the Bleeding Obvious, in that you're going to go, yeah, of course. <laughs> or, I'm not going to, like you're going to block me from ever seeing this event ever held again, because a couple of people have gotten really massively offended by what I've said. So let's see how it goes. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I think one test is, is what we're creating useful? I don't think that's too controversial. I think that the object that you're creating <coughs> with your students should be useful. I actually think that's probably why lots of students like things like metalwork and woodwork. Um, when I was young and even more arrogant, I used to think it's because they couldn't read and write and they like messing around and poking people with sharp objects. But in actual fact, you walk out of that class with an object that you might keep for half of your life. Whereas you walk out of probably most of my classes over the past six and a half years with something you might look back and all you get out of it was nostalgia for the time you'd spent in class. It wasn't actually useful. And I'm not feeling great about that. Now, it's got to be well crafted. Does anybody know what this video is? It's fairly popular. Nobody knows this one. It's First World Problems. Oh, yes. Fantastic video. Yes. Now, it's a YouTube video done by a teenager making a glib commentary on society. It is so well put together. It's professional standard. You know, it's really well crafted. And you know what? A beautifully made pencil case is better than a crappily made pencil case. Quality matters. That things that have got more craftsmanship in care in them, they're of higher value than things that don't. Musicians, with which I was very brief with one, say, oh, I wrote that song in three minutes. It's on the back of a bus. Absolute crap. Absolute outright lie. But they like this sort of mystique that goes with, I don't even remember writing that one. I was in Rio de Janeiro, but I wrote it spiritually back in Estelon. You know, um, they play it down. But in actual fact, objects of value are really finely crafted. I do think, I heard a story at a conference, a keynote speaker got up and said, we did something really authentic. The kids made a page about breast cancer being bad and 200 people liked it. And I just, I just thought, I'm sorry I didn't bring a hip flask. Like it was all I could do not to start drinking on the spot. I don't see that as being very much value. You've got 200 likes on a social media page and it turns out breast cancer is bad. So, but I don't think they really changed anything. That's the lowest level, but here's where, that's the lowest rung of useful. Just simply entertaining people a little. I would also say that even entertainment that I'm deeply attached to, anyone know this one? Come on. Yeah, what is it? A bit louder. It's love actually. Oh, I'll probably watch it two or three times a year. I cry at bits. <laughs> I don't really do I genuinely weep. It's just entertainment. It's good. I couldn't do it. It's entertainment. You know what? Entertainment's got to be the bottom rung. We can't just do things that get 200 likes or that we send out to a small audience. There's more in the world than entertaining people. And here's how I think we should also be judging it. And this is a bit that gets a little bit dodgy. This guy's called Dan Savage, and he's a fairly, fairly controversial advice columnist. He talks about the campsite rule. Anyone know what the campsite rule is? You leave it better than you found it. And I think that when we have our students making something, it's saying, did this leave the world better than they found it? This is the bit that upsets people. I think there's a moral dimension to the tasks we construct. Those working in the public sector, in the government schools, freak out when people talk about morals. Oh my God, you're talking about the church. I'm talking about there being a difference between right and wrong, between being worthless and destructive and worthwhile and constructive. And I think that we need to apply this test to the stuff that we're doing and say, if students do this, does it follow the campsite rule? If I'm getting them to write an essay, have I improved the world at all? I might have made them a better communicator and that might be improving the world a smidge and maybe I can live with that. 
But I would say not a hell of a lot of the stuff I've done this year actually meets my own test. It's just dress rehearsal. And I think we need to aim higher. And people have said to me, oh, that's too hard. You're raising the bar too high. I mean, oh, because doctors wouldn't ask themselves, I've always got to work towards saving the patient's life rather than them dying. And hang on, yes, they do. And lawyers work towards getting people's interests represented versus not. And we should be working towards making the world better through what they're doing or not. And again, don't know whether that's from the Institute of the Bleeding Obvious or not. Let's see what's next. Because there are, in fact, real problems beyond whether 200 people can click on a page and say that breast cancer is bad. There are parts of our country and there are parts of the world with serious problems. Terrible, dreadful things going on that Facebook campaigns will not solve. And we have first world problems that need to be solved too. My sister-in-law died of breast cancer at the start of this year. One end, I got lost because my GPS didn't work in the rain at this end. They're all problems, they all need solving. If you could save people from cancer, amazing. I'm not saying we're going to do that in our classroom, but it's got to start somewhere. And if we can set people up to solve a little problem like my GPS won't work in the rain, that'd be lovely too. Big problems, first world problems. Um, I think I certainly need to step up, look at what I'm doing and say, am I creating a genuine object of value and being brutally honest with myself about whether I'm leaving the place better than I found it. And I think I'm on the time. Thank you.